In the previous lesson, we understood the difference between rotational and irrotational flows. We also learned about vortex motion and the importance of vorticity. Naturally, the next questions that come to mind are How can we visualize the flow? How do we visualize a vortex? Can we experience what happens to the flow around an aircraft wing? In this lesson, we are going to discuss some flow visualization techniques used in engineering design cycle to develop products. In most scenarios, flow visualization provides a qualitative understanding of what the flow field looks like. In most cases, like in the case of modern computational flow visualizations, the resultant information is useful to quantify these flows for various engineering applications. In this lesson, we will limit ourselves to the qualitative aspects of flow visualization. Broadly speaking, visualization techniques can be classified as experimental and computational. Most visualizations analyze flow behavior through surface flow patterns. Experiments conducted in wind tunnel facilities use the concept of streamlines to understand the aerodynamic shape of an aircraft or an automobile. Wind tunnels mimic the motion of these means of transportation. Generally, a scaled model of an automobile or an aircraft is used in these wind tunnel tests. Sometimes, the body of interest is only a small portion, such as the wing of an aircraft or the spoiler of an automobile. The scaled model is fastened in the wind tunnel facility and is maintained stationary. High-speed air is blown onto these models using a large rotating fan. The air moving around this stationary object gives us an understanding of what would happen if the object were moving at a certain speed. White smoke jets are released at specific locations to create streamlines around these scaled models. These smoke jets are released from either one or a rake of multiple smoke generators in the wind tunnel. The generated smoke blows around the body being tested. The interaction of these smoke lines with the body of the aircraft or automobile helps the engineer understand the impact of its shape. These smoke lines provide a macroscopic understanding of the overall flow around the body. A general sense of where the air is flowing and where the vortices are being generated can be obtained from these smoke lines. In addition to white smoke, fluid engineers also make use of flow tufts to understand and visualize flow very close to the body. Tufts are small strips of yarn and strings about 15 cm long. One end of the tuft is securely glued to the surface of the model being tested before it is placed inside the wind tunnel. As air blows over these flow tufts, the loose end of these tufts is free to move with the flow. Because the length and weight of these tufts are carefully selected, they provide a good understanding of flow very close to the body without actually altering the flow. These are particularly crucial in obtaining qualitative information on cross flow, reverse flow and flow separation close to the solid. These flow behaviors influence the overall resistance offered by the body to the flow. Another popular flow visualization technique employed in high-speed wind tunnels is to observe oil flow streaks over surfaces. The surface of the test object, such as a wing of an aircraft, are coated with viscous oil. The oil is transported by flowing high-speed air, leaving streaks on the surface of the test object. These oil streaks are good indicators of flow separation over the body. 
The initial thickness of the oil film is an important factor to obtain meaningful results from this flow visualization technique. Wind tunnels are a great way of visualizing external air flow over bodies. In a similar manner, water tunnels are used to visualize and test the hydrodynamic behavior of submerged bodies under water. In these water tunnels, the model to be tested is kept stationary in the flowing water and the flow over these submerged bodies is visualized by injecting colored dyes into the flow. Similar to white smoke lines in a wind tunnel, the lines obtained by injecting these colored dyes provide information about the macroscopic flow around the submerged body. In addition, it also provides information related to the whereabouts of vortices. Certain water tunnels have the ability to increase or reduce the internal static pressure to perform cavitation studies. These studies are extremely important for designing propeller blades of a submarine or a ship. Schlieren photography is an optical visualization technique which distinguishes fluids of varying densities. It uses the principle that light rays bend differently when passing from a denser medium to a rarer one or vice versa. It uses a bright source of light, a knife edge for focusing the light better, and two concave mirrors on either side of the flow being visualized. It was primarily developed for studying high-speed supersonic flows. Shockwaves are common in supersonic flows and this visualization technique was developed to capture these shockwaves. A shockwave is a thin narrow region with high gradients of pressure, density and temperature. The rays of light passing through this shockwave are bent and are stopped by the knife edge. This prevents those rays from reaching the recording device. They are therefore captured as dark lines on the image. All these experimental techniques require careful calibration and instrumentation. In fact, most of these experimental setups are expensive and can only be operated by a trained staff. Not all aspects of flow physics are brought out through these experimental techniques. Therefore, in this modern age, computer models are capable of providing insights into flow physics that cannot be captured experimentally. For fluids, these models are generally referred to as computational fluid dynamics, CFD in short. The results obtained from these models are capable of analyzing flow data and finally displaying the flow as surface plots such as contours, vector plots, streamlines, path lines and particle track plots. With the invention of virtual reality, users can now get an immersive experience of the flow field. We are now able to travel along a streamline or visualize a vortex in a flow field from its center. The beauty of computational visualization lies in the fact that the engineer can now understand aspects of flow which might not be possible with experimental techniques. In fluid dynamics, it is important to use both these sets of flow visualizations. In fact, in most industries, experiments and computations go hand in hand during a product design cycle. 